and now I cut my piece of slide film. I cut it out of this medium format 645 slide film. And you can see there's these black bars in between the pictures. I just used one of those and cut a little square out of it, the same size as the sensor. So I have this little guy now. It's impossible to pick up. I wiped it on both sides with rubbing alcohol in between my microfiber towel and then wiped it off. And then you set that little square into the camera body there. Make sure it's about the same size. This is the little rubber gasket that's between the sensor and the, the IR cut filter before. So that'll go back in here too. looks like that's not perfectly square. There's one way that it goes in and if it doesn't fit, they'll turn it the other way. Now we take the sensor, make sure the sensor didn't get any dust on it. Be careful not to breathe directly under the sensor because you'll get little spit things on it making it possible to clean. And a couple springs fell out of here that I need to put back in. Looks like there's two of them. Frankly, I have no idea what they're for. Check my sensor. Set that back down on there. I'm gonna put the screws back in. And this, these are the special screws. I forgot to mention a handy tool is a pair of needle nose pliers with a small tip like these. Like I said, the hardest part of the job is coming up, and that's getting these two ribbon connectors back in the card, because you can't put them back in until this is set fully in place. It is possible I'm not doing this totally the right way. I don't have a service manual or anything. So what you do is you stick that down in there, and then this one's easier of the two, so I'll do that one second. This other one over here, it wants to flip back up and you can't get it into the slot. So you might have to use the needle nose pliers, loop them around here, and kind of bend it over, being careful not to pull on it until you get into the slot. Once it gets into the slot there, then you can just kind of push it in from the back. But again, it's hard to push, so you might need to use the needle nose pliers to push it in. Once that one's in, make sure you lock it down or it'll fall out on you. I know from personal experience. And then, this other one, same thing. Just take the needle nose pliers, curve it down, stick it in there like that. Push this one from the back. You want to make sure there's a little slot where that connector lays. You want to make sure it's in the slot because it can still be in there and be off to the side and it won't work. I had to take my camera apart three times because something wouldn't work. Either the LCD, the lens, or something else. Once that's in there, make sure you flip that lock down. Okay, a piece that falls out on you too is this bottom tripod mount holder, which I don't even know where it went now. Oh, it's still in the other bottom. Okay, 
So once that's back in there, you take the top, the top goes back on, you have to lay the front end first with the flash, and snap it in. Make sure it doesn't interfere with that cable. I had it knock that cable out yesterday. Okay, make sure it's snapped in place. Make sure it fits flush on the front. And then you have to put that little screw back in there, and that's the tricky part too. The trick is, put the screw on your screwdriver like that, and turn the camera upside down, make sure the circuit board doesn't fall out. And go in there like that. It's that easy. Okay. Only because I've done it several times. Once that's done, the last tricky part is getting this back on. You have two ribbon connectors to reattach. And they go like, like this. So the ribbon connectors point this way because when you flip it over, it will be pointing back this way into the board. You really can't get them in the wrong spot. So make sure the locks are flipped up. This lock flips the opposite direction, the little one. 